Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Earrings Off. We want to invite you to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. You can find us on Facebook at Earrings Off Podcast and on Instagram at The Earrings Off Podcast. Welcome to Earrings Off. I'm Lou. And I'm Teresa. Let's get started. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Earrings Off. So good to be here, I tell you. Teresa, so how are you this morning? I'm actually doing very good. I had a wonderful night's rest, and I was able to get my workout in before the show. And Uh, um, so I'm feeling pretty good. Got my flower in the air. Yeah, I know, right? Okay, all right, I'll see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you. Teresa. Yes. Do you want to say, Lou, how, what, what is going on? Lou, how are you? Well. No, no hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Rewind. You're right. Lou, I got Dude, so you, caught I'm up. Sure you you know embarrass, you know I'm sure you embarrass your mom on this show. What in the world? So I'm I mean, sure, just hold on, hold on, pretend hold on. that you care that I'm so living here, and breathing. Here's the Let's thing. start with that. Let's start with that. Lou, here's the thing. Okay, I had bad manners this morning, but let me tell you where my head was. I really wasn't even here. I was looking at how this flower looked and whether or not I need to take it out. <laughs> That's oh, what okay. All right. So Important let me, stuff. <laughs> let okay. me just back up. Let me back up. You know I love you. Yes. How are you this morning, my friend? Well, I'm doing well. I'm doing very well. You know, I just came. Family reunion, and I am still just marinating in the love and the support and the laughter. I, I tell you, it's just a, it's just a, a great time, and. Even better, you know, my brother and sister-in-law who are supposed to be spades champions, you know, everybody in the family, we think they have some kind of secret code. Um, my niece and I beat them, so we are now the <laughs> champions of the family. So, you know, it's going kind of day for me. I'm just, I'm just still, I'm just still yes. excited. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> that is congratulations. congratulations. You well, know thank, what? Thank, I didn't even you. know you knew how to play that. I so. know, right? Went back yeah. to my college days. Went back yeah. to my college days. But, that is uh, awesome. But I want to was... tell you something. Uh-huh. I love, 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 love that you guys do this. And even though it's not my family, I am, I'm sitting on pins and needles just waiting to see pictures, oh, hear the that. stories. And it, you, you guys have such a close-knit well, family. And I and really, you know. really love that. Thank you. You know, we haven't um, had been together except for a funeral, you know, except for sad times during COVID, you know, and um, we were nervous and um, took all the precautions we could take and just tried to remind people, please stay extra safe because we wanted to see each other. It was just a wonderful time. I really feel rejuvenated, revived. It's amazing how you can go through life and you you feel normal, like you're executing and doing everything. And then when you feel like you've been put on oxygen, it's like, oh my goodness, I was barely yeah. making it. Yeah, I needed that. How was I even surviving without that? So right. um, I tell you, it was just a wonderful time. I'm still on a high, just still, still on a high. I don't want any negativity around me. I'm just, I'm just sort of basking in it. So I'm thankful. Yeah. Very, very. And you know, best of all, and really why it's so important. It's, um, it's for the young people, the kids. Oh Oh, my goodness. The cousins who don't see each other, who can barely pronounce each other's names. You know, I have a sweet grandnephew. His name is uh, Adonis, but my granddaughter calls him Donald. I think that's the best she can do, but uh, (laughs) he calls her baby. So I think she's a step up from that. So just, (laughs) just, just hearing that. And uh, it was just good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. 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 Awesome. 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 All right. Um, You ready to move on with the show? I am ready. 
Okay, so today, instead of highlighting a woman who kicks butt, I wanted to look at the habits that make women successful or people well, in general successful. Well, folks, just so you know, that's the way Teresa is. I just plunge right in with um, women who kick butt. And Teresa, you know, in her way, had to let me know, we didn't explain what that looks like. We no, need no, to no. talk about it. So that's why we are where we are today. Well, well, because well, see, here's what the deal with that, right? The deal is that, you know, we are high, like, like we talked about Liz Cheney, but, but in everyday life, women are successful, whether they're homemakers, oh, you yeah. know, whether they're, you know, yeah, whatever, they're whatever the, the role is, you yeah. know, it takes a matter of planning and intention to be successful in whatever it is, whatever it is you're trying to do, whether you're going to work every day or whatever. And plus, yeah. I have to admit, Lou, a, a bit so a bit of selfishness, like what you highlighted in the beginning about me, went into the thought of this as well, because part of it, part of success is having that I feel, and in all the books that I've read, that morning routine, right? Which I have just fallen off with that. Really? I, yeah. I have, what? my my morning routine has just been getting myself up and out, right? So you usually work out in the morning, Teresa. I do, I do, but it's not consistent, right? I still do. Yeah. But because what what has happened to me is that I'm in a hybrid situation back at work. Yeah. So it's one week I'm I'm working from home, one week I'm working in the, in the office, and it's hard to just keep that consistency because I have to get up a little earlier on the days that I have to go into the office, which throws everything off, you know. So when I'm working from home, it's perfect, or can be. <laughs> and but when I'm in the office, not not so much. So it's yeah. been to kind of tough. So I wanted to talk about these things to kind of remind myself and, and all of this. So let's, let's just jump right into it. Okay. 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 W one of the, I, I chose, um, in my, in my preparation for this, I, I went back to an old trusty dusty, okay. the seven habits of highly effective people by Steve, Stephen Covey. I think and that book was, was and Teresa, you know how, you know, I read a lot, but I don't, think I've read that one. When you mentioned oh. it, I'm like, I, unless I read it years ago, I don't recall it. And yeah. so I, and then I see it's so popular. I don't know how I missed it, but I did. Oh my gosh. Because the principles in it are true even today. I think this book was written back in the 90s or maybe what? even the 80s. Okay. It's, it's been around for a long, long time, but there's still workshops given with these seven habits and, um, they're still they're still true to this day, right? All right. Um, Stephen Covey was, I mean, he's just he was just amazing. But yeah. um, and of course, different people, different podcasts. You know, they take different spins on them and come. You know, it's it you make them cater to you cater them to whatever helps and suits you. And I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna just list the seven habits, but then I'm gonna talk about. Uh, specifically what I do and then um, or try to do and then I want to highlight a couple of women and that I've found and what their morning routines look like because it is in the morning that that the intention for your day is set right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the way you start your day is I feel the way your day will go so the seven habits mm -hmm. um, being proactive is number one begin with the end in mind so the way that you will see, wait, but when you say when you say be proactive, what yeah, do you yeah, mean yeah. by that? What does that mean? Mm -hmm. So so you have to know that you have. For me, this is what this means. You have to know that there's something that you want to accomplish, right? And you okay. got to be a proactive and planning for that something. Okay. You can't just. You can't just know that there's something that you're playing. For instance, our podcast, right? Right. So right. when we decided to do it, we jumped right in there with the planning. Um, we we had tasks. We we every day we were just we were on it. And the second one began with the end in mind. We knew that we were having a podcast even before we knew. Like I had so, to tell you what the podcast was, right? Huh. I had to tell you what the pie, yeah. what a podcast was. 
You sure did, folks. Okay, don't gloss over that. You know what? Since you're trying to embarrass me, no, I don't no, no, care. No. I don't care. So listen, I, I'll own my own stuff. So, oh, okay, good. <laughs> Teresa and I were talking about a vehicle to share information, and she said a podcast. I said, "What is that?" <laughs> What is that? And she and my husband, now she, they listen to them all the time. And I was like, what? <laughs> so yeah. there, okay. Yeah. So, so claim it, act as though. That's what the begin with the end in mind. Act yeah. as though. Act as though we have a million listeners. Okay, I'm going to be more realistic. A hundred thousand <laughs> listeners. <laughs> act as though we have a hundred thousand active listeners, right? Okay. The third thing is, so be proactive, begin with the end in mind. The third thing is put first things first, right? So you got to prioritize those goals and those steps yeah. in achieving, achieving. Um, your well, work. and you know what? I, I do, I do ascribe to that because mm -hmm. it is so easy when you are going about your day to day and executing to get thrown off track, you know, yes. because, and I do that with the podcast, when I, when something distracts me, I remind myself, does this have anything to do with the show or with the podcast, what I'm supposed to be concentrating on? Right. I mean, is this going to help us to gain viewers or make a better show? If it's not doing that, then I need to put that to the side because I'm on task right now. So, so Lou, yeah. you know what, what I struggle with is because so much of it is, um, content, right? And yeah. so when I'm looking for ideas, I am so quick down a rabbit hole because social media, there's so much information out there yeah. and I'll see something that'll trigger something else in my mind. And it's like, what was I doing? And then yeah. by that time, a whole hour has gone by. So it's hard to, to, to prioritize and keep focused, but that's yeah. what we got to do. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, think when, when, Okay. So, talk, talk to us about that. So collaborating more effectively by building high trust relationships. So you can't, you're not an island, right? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta go out and network. You know, we've talked about this and we actually yeah. do this, right? So yeah. you gotta network, you gotta build a community and you gotta, you gotta have some help to help you accomplish it. Well, and I tell you, particularly in the workplace, it's always good to, well, for me, one of the things I just um, was not my favorite thing was to go to conferences and trainings because for for a lot of them, it feels like you're hearing the same thing and, you know, yeah, I've been there, done that. It's not something I need to do. Uh, but when I got to the point where I realized it was bigger than that, it was forming relationships, knowing who's in another state I may be able to call, who's done what I'm trying to do. Um, that made my job easier. So, yeah, trying to make sure that uh, we remember that, particularly yeah. as women, because a lot of times we tend to think we have to do it all. Yeah. And that can that kind of thinking can bleed over into the workplace where we take that and think, OK, I have to do it all or I already know how to do it. So I don't have to trust my colleague to do it. But sometimes just um, networking, talking with other people right, gives you a right. better, um, better perspective. So, right. Yeah. And so sometimes you said you made a point early on um sometimes you're right. You, you're hearing things that you've already heard before, but sometimes it's as if what? you've heard it for the first time. Right. right. And it's like, you're right. reminded right. that, Oh yeah, I forgot that I used to do that. Or, right. that, you know, it was like hearing it again for the first time. <laughs> yeah. So, so moving on to the next one. Um, number five, seek to understand first before making yourself understood. Mm -hmm. Influence others by developing a deep understanding of their needs and perspectives. And a large part of that, mm -hmm. to me, is listen more than you talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to, in the workplace, yeah. a lot of times and in our lives, we, we want to let people know how very bright we are. 
and how, you know, we got it going on. But as you, um, you know, as you, I don't want to say mature a bit, but become more seasoned or understand the dynamics of the workplace and of relationships, you get that you listen and uh, you absorb information. And a lot of time that will be instrumental in planning your response and your next step. So, yeah. Very good. Yeah, that's exactly right. Number mm -hmm. six, synergize. Learn to synergize. Develop innovative solutions that leverage diversity and satisfies all the key stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Making sure that you, you value others and that you understand that we all have different strengths, weaknesses, yep. perspectives, mm -hmm. and being willing to um, acknowledge and yield to those makes certainly makes a stronger team. I even think in relationships, it makes a stronger relationship, a stronger family, a stronger partner. Yeah. 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 So Lou, it's almost like you've read the book, honestly. I I told you it's all right <laughs> yes, here. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Sh yeah. Sharpen the saw. Yeah. So increase motivation, energy, work-life balance by making time and for renewing activities. Okay. So you got to take care of yourself. Okay. You got to take and, care of yourself. And you do. You really yeah. do. You really you do. You really do have to take care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you when you said we were going to you were going to review the points in this book and I hadn't read them and uh, actually didn't plan to invest any of my time reading it this close to the show. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, OK, all right. Teresa's going to cover these seven habits. What do I have? And so I thought about that. So came up with my own stuff. I didn't write, of course, uh, the author is, is better able because he's so, uh, he made a bestseller and apparently people are, are all over the world are responding to it. I don't have a bestseller, but that doesn't mean I didn't learn some things in the workplace. So one thing I wrote about, um, well, one thing we just talked about, I believe this um, wholeheartedly. I had someone tell me years ago. Um, this is what you're going to do on this job. When I started a job that um, was pretty high, they had a high turnover rate and I was nervous because I knew going in that they had a high turnover rate and that it was a difficult environment, all of that. But what someone said to me was two things. Um, well, one thing, actually, watch your mouth. When you go to the water cooler, you're just nodding your head when folks oh, are Oh, yeah. You're just saying, mm -hmm. oh, no, is that right? Mm -hmm. You are not giving fuel to it. You mm -hmm. are not saying anything that's going to allow people to attach your name to stuff. Lou said. And, and so I learned that, you know, because certainly, you know, when you know that you're walking into a situation that may be a bit dysfunctional, don't think you're going to cure it. You make sure that um, you have those conversations if you feel you must have them in a safe space at home with your partner or your sister, your brother, somebody like that. You are not, I just learned to watch what I say and to keep my mouth shut and to listen and to just nod a lot. So doesn't that, that, that actually fits in with number five, doesn't it? Yeah. So that was, that was, um, that was a lesson that I learned. Yeah. And awesome. Huh? That's awesome. And one and other thing that I learned early in my career that I believe was probably the thing that um, was one of the best things that I did. And, and I don't know if it works for everybody, but, you know, I can, I've always been a bit of a miser, very uh, conservative with funds. And one thing I did was to make sure that I didn't spend the money that I lived my life in such a way that I it was below my salary so that if something happened, then I could leave. I had choices. Yeah. I could leave and I didn't, I wasn't at the mercy of my bosses that um, 
I, I talked to myself about this before I started work. Listen, this is your salary. This is what you're going to spend. The rest has to go into the four fifty, you know, four hundred one k, whatever it may be. It we have to squirrel away this money, uh, any kind of matching funds that they had, because I wanted the flexibility. And when you work in positions where people can fire you at will, or you know, it can be a toxic environment. Don't pretend that that doesn't exist. Make sure you protect yourself. And one of the best ways to protect yourself is to know that you can be flexible. And I also, I knew by living on a reduced salary, if I needed to, I could survive on a lesser one if I needed to leave. I didn't need to match that salary. I could survive no matter what people say. She took, um, you know, she... Um, you know, went down or took a less shoot, she took a lesser position. I didn't care about any of that. What I cared about was my um, sanity yeah. and my repu my yeah. work reputation. Right. And so a lot of times if we don't do that and aren't careful with our money, we may, I don't want to say we compromise our integrity, mm -hmm. but people can sort of smell blood in the water oh, yeah. if you're at their mercy. Yeah. <laughs> and some people just aren't kind when they smell blood in the water. So that's just one thing. I didn't read the book, but I'm just sharing what I, I learned um, myself. And one other thing that I learned was you, to own my mistakes. You know, right, right. when I did something that was not right, that was clearly an error, I didn't try to hide it. I didn't try to run from it. I was the first one in the office saying, you know what? I screwed up. This is what happened. And all I could do then is to try to clean it up, rectify it, do damage control, communicate. But people that worked with me always knew that, and people over me always knew, no, if, if Lou did something, she's going to tell you. You yeah. don't have to ever worry about that. Lou, that is, that is a very, very big piece of advice because- and it applies not just to corporate, mm -hmm. it applies to life, right? So we need to basically own whatever the stuff is, right? And not let it dictate who we are, yeah. right? And yeah. you have to own it and move on, exactly. right? And exactly. don't relive it. Don't relive it and keep it moving. Yeah, because we aren't perfect. And we can try to do a great job and and all of that, but we are going to not get it right all the time. All we don't time. get it right at work. We don't get it right at home. But when something happens, you know, just say, you know, that that was just that I, I screwed up. That that wasn't a good call. I thought it was, but okay, this is what this is what I've come up with to try to address it. And um, I never had a lot of respect for people, any, quite frankly, any respect for people in the workplace, particularly when they screw up and you don't own it. I'm, I'm like, what are you, five? I mean, really? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that- the blame, that, Blaming others. Yeah, yeah I, have a, I have a problem with that. So I think that's one thing, um, just just own, own your mistakes. And- um, like when I when I talked about the financial piece earlier, not only does it give give you flexibility, it also allows you to be a bit bolder in the workplace because you're not so fearful of what what's going to happen. Yeah. So you you feel a bit more confident in the workplace right. to be creative, to yeah. share ideas, okay. all of that. I think right. all of that. Um, you know, works hand in hand um, with each other. So, and one thing I wrote a blog about recently, um, and it's on www.earringsoff.com, just pull up the blog, was an example I cited where when I was fresh out of grad school, just getting a, a new promotion. And the reason I got the promotion was somebody was watching me that I didn't even know was paying attention to mm -hmm. what I was doing. So just be aware of, um, you know, how you're conducting yourself and um, try to do a good job. And when you fail or you fall short, own up to that. You were doing the best you could. Things happened. This is what um, occurred. I think I've shared before 
uh, when my mom passed um, on my job, I was running a, a team at the time, and probably for about a month, I just went in my office after she passed, and I went in my office, and I would close the door, and I never closed the door before. I would work all day long with the door open, but after she passed, I'd just go in the office and close the door, and I would just work. And I should have noticed something was going on. It was, you know, not as much work as usual. And then when I started getting, you know, back into the groove of things, my team told me, they said, well, the director told us not to bother you, that we, we were to give you some space because you lost your mom. But I believe I earned that from the director because yes. of the work that I'd done previously. Right. And my team carried me because they knew at times I'd carry them. So right. we have to be aware of the networking piece yes. and the fact and how we conduct ourselves with others in the workplace and in our relationships because we're not these habits of successful people they sort of run the gamut all over the place in how in terms of how we interact day to day. So didn't read the book, but that's my story and I'm sticking me, to it. Let me say so. this. Do you have another before I say what I have to no, say? No, no, I, I'm good. I think okay. that's, um, I was going to share one about my biggest blunder on the job, but all you need to know is own your mistakes. That's all I'm saying, <laughs> folks. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to, the of course, I'm going off script here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Lou, I have to tell you this. You always tell me, uh, Lou is a writer, y'all. And as you can, as you just heard, she is quite a storyteller. Right? Oh, thanks. Yeah. So thanks. that would, that you have a book in you about you this subject. I keep telling you I'm uh, not Lou, disciplined enough for a book. Lou. I know you didn't it, do this on Look, I, look <laughs> I'm trying to make my millions off of your back. Okay. <laughs> well, we're going to be some broke sisters. That's no, all I not. got to say. <laughs> No, we're not. You are going to write a book, Lou. That was so motivational and so rich. Your experiences coupled with the lessons. Oh my gosh. There's well, a book. Thank, thank you, Teresa. But I think if we're going to bet on a horse, how about we bet on your natural health cookbook? How about that? No. Your gluten free I- cookbook <laughs> with all the wonderful recipes that even I eat and enjoy. And you know what a critic I am. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I think, uh, we digress, but okay, yes. that was some good stuff. That was some well, good thanks. stuff. Thanks. So a, a couple of ladies um, that I I found um, some interesting information about what they do to get their day started. Ariana Huffington, do you know her? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Huffington Post. She started the Huffington Post. She's relentless with making her priorities. Okay. She's comfortable with competition, okay? Mm-hmm. She unplugs from social media every day mm-hmm. to recharge and refuel. And she's not afraid of failing. Mm. Her mother always said that failure isn't the opposite of success. It's a stepping stone. Yeah. And I tell you, Teresa, in, in life... Some of the best le- lessons are learned in failures so and falling yeah. short. Painful lessons, but yeah. great lessons. So, yeah, yeah, but you're right. You're right. Yeah. She reads, this is at night to prepare for good sleep. She reads real books, ones that have nothing to do with work, which allows her to get to sleep and to sleep well through the night. Yeah. You know, that that's a good one because... You know, I've always been a reader, but I was a bit of a snob with reading. I just shunned fiction for years. And it was like, I only want to read about real events and things that happen and can educate me. And then when I got into fiction, I get it because it's an escape, yeah. you know? Yeah. And um, yeah. I so enjoy a good book of fiction. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is um, the most important thing is how she begins and ends her day. She doesn't reach for her phone. She takes um, a few minutes to do deep breathing, to be grateful and to set her intention for the day. And then she does some meditation and or yoga. 
And another one, uh, Rachel Hollis, you know, I'm a fan of hers. She's a podcaster. Oh, and, yeah. And an author. Big, you're a big fan. Yeah. <laughs> she starts her day with gratitude, right? Just what all the things that she's grateful for. And they're not like uh, little things. Like she gives it thought to say uh, like real things. Not like I'm not grateful. Not things like I'm grateful for that piece of cake yesterday. You know what I mean? Something more okay, deeper. Okay, because that's, that's mine, but okay. Go on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exercise. She has a gratitude practice. She exercises every morning. And then she starts her day out with water. And so her other th big thing is that she tries to drink X ounces of water a day. And, and then she's intentional about her first nutrition, first food that she t takes, um, that she eats. If she can, she has an hour to herself, just by herself. Michelle Obama, we all know her. Oh, yeah. Former first lady. Yeah. Her number one daily habit is to give herself permission to be happy. Oh, wow. It's yeah. physical and it's mental. It's her diet. It's her physical activity and her emotional state. That's all tied together. That was a quote. You know, when you said that gives herself permission to be happy, because I will intentionally say in the morning, oh, this is a great day. It's going to be a good day. I'm going to make it a great day. And I, I feel like that. Yeah. Um, and I don't do it every morning, but. You know, when I remember that, I try to, to say that out loud to remind myself and my spirit that I control that. You know, I don't control all the factors that may be in my day, but I definitely control my response to them and how I interpret them. Right, right. So, yeah. Look at the time. <laughs> yeah, the time has this, flown by. Yeah, yeah. This was a great, great, you know, great conversation. Well, I tell you, folks, thank you so very much thank for you, joining thanks. us today. We wish you all the very best. Thank take you. Take good and care. And take, yes, take good care. Bye-bye, <laughs> right. folks. Bye.